Hello everyone, my name is Saba and I'm going to talk about my project on identifying transcriptional regulators of cancer progression by integrated analysis of multiomics data. In this project, we propose a framework to understand the cis regulatory mechanisms underlying colorectal cancer invasiveness by integrating transcriptomic and epigenomic data. For this purpose, our collaborators in Mayo Clinic establish an invasive subculture of this W480 cells by repeated selection of cells that could invade through porous membrane coated with matrigal toward the chemo attractant. And from this experiment, they characterized the cell lines in four different stages of invasiveness called M0, M2, M4, and M6 and profiled gene expression, genome-wide DNA accessibility, and histone modification for four select histone marks that are known to be associated with cis-regulatory information in each stage. In addition to the data obtained from this experiment, we also used tf chipsic data from HCT116 cell line, which is similar to a SW480 cell line from ENCODE project. And I should also point out that we only worked with M0 and M6 cell lines as there was a clear separation between their phenotypic and expression patterns. And the goal is to use this data to identify transcription factors and transcription factor gene relationships associated with CRC invasiveness. So to find the TFs that are relevant to CRC invasiveness, we first need to look for the genes that are differentially expressed uh, between the two stages of progression, and then find the TFs that regulate these genes. One approach to do this is to test for the enrichment of the TF binding site close to the differentially expressed genes. But the problem with this approach is that the TF binding site itself is a poor predictor of functional TF gene regulation. To mitigate this issue, we increase the functional specificity of TF binding site by considering the TF binding sites that have a change in epigenomic state. For example, if a gene, if the expression of a gene increases from early to later stage of progression, and we observe that in the TF binding site close to the gene, there is a gain in H3K27 acetylation histone mark, which is an activator mark, then we are more confident that the TF binding site is functional and the TF is regulating the gene during progression. Now let's take a look at the input to our model. So the input to our model is a 2D matrix where the genes are the rows and we have the differential expression p-value of the genes as the first column of the matrix and the rest of the columns represent the regulatory evidence associated with the TF. And here for each histone mark, we have two columns representing the gain or loss of the histone mark peak within TF binding site. And because we have four histone marks, there are eight regulatory bits per TF. And we can have the regulatory information not, for one, not only for one TF, but for multiple TFs. And the question we would like to answer is which evidences or columns in this matrix are more predictive of differential expression. Now to answer this question, we use, the, we use the model that is largely built on a previous work uh, from my former lab mate published in Genome Research. It's a probabilistic graphical model that assigns, that assigns a hidden binary random variable to each gene representing whether the gene mediates the effect of transcription factor on phenotype, which in this case is CRC invasiveness. Also for each gene, there is a binary evidence 
for each pair of TFT and dynamic mark M that contributes to the model with a weight specific to the, uh, to the pair TFT and dynamic mark M that is shared among the genes. We also define a prior on the mediation status of the gene, which is a function of the weighted sum of the regulatory evidences for the gene. And finally, the distribution that the differential expression p-value of the gene comes from is dependent on the mediation status of the gene. Here, as I mentioned, we have weights specific to each TFT and dynamic mark pair, but we also tested a simpler model where we factorized the weight specific to TFT and dynamic mark M into two terms. The first term is WT standing for a TF weight, and the second one stands for the dynamic mark weight. And we hope that these two terms capture the role of TF and dynamic mark during progression. And we, are, we were also able to show that the simpler model could, uh, could, have, could, could give us results similar to the more sophisticated model and also provides us with some biological intuition about the, the role of the TF and dynamic marks. So now let's take a look at the results. So we did, we performed two separate analyses for upregulated and downregulated genes and ranked the TFs for each of them. And uh, here you can see that for the highly ranked TFs such as Jundi and Fossil, we found considerable literature evidence relating them to CRC invasiveness and cancer-related pathways. Also, as I mentioned earlier, our simpler model assigns weights to TFs and marks. And here on the left, you can see that the TF weights learned by the model is consistent between the analysis that we performed for downregulated and upregulated genes. On the other hand, the dynamic histone mark weights flip between upregulated and downregulated analysis, which is kind of expected. In addition to our main strategy, which is taking the TF binding site overlapping with the dynamic histone mark as the regulatory evidence, we tested some alternative strategies in which we define regulatory evidence differently. For example, taking only the presence of TF binding site as the regulatory evidence. And we observed that all of the alternative strategies perform worse than our main strategy. We also went for some experimental validations for one of our highly ranked TFs, D which is a component of AP1 transcription factor. And observed that migration and uh, invasion decrease, decrease on Jundi knockdown. Our model is able to rank the TFs based on the relevance, based on their relevance to CRC invasiveness, but it's also, um, it, it, it can also predict TF gene relationships by scoring the strength of TF gene relationships using the posterior probability of the mediation status of the gene given data. Using this capability of our model, we predicted Jundi targets and did a hypergeometric test for the predicted Jundi targets and differentially expressed genes on Jundi knockdown and observed that predicted Jundi targets are highly enriched in differentially expressed genes on Jundi knockdown. And to summarize, we provided a comprehensive multiomics approach to investigate the cis-regulatory mechanisms underlying CRC invasiveness 
and identified numerous TFs and downstream targets known to be involved in metastasis-related processes. And most important of all, our approach can be used to study regulatory mechanisms underlying autobiological processes as well. And at the end, I would like to acknowledge all the individuals who contributed to this work significantly. Thanks for your attention. All right. Uh, thank you, Sula, for the very nice talk. All right. So let's uh, see if there are any questions. Uh, so maybe right now, but we don't have any questions from the audience. So let me get started with a question. So. Uh, so I think uh, um, so I was curious. Like, have you found tradition? Have you found tradition factors that um, you are not able to uh, verify? Maybe so. Like, you know, for example, for several transcription factors, we are able to measure both tip and knockout or knockdown expression. Um, and some of it is actually available in specific cell types. And I was curious, uh, it's great that you were able to validate June, uh, but like, are there other uh, transcription factors that uh, were actually good and were the transcription factors that were probably not very good? And if you have any thoughts about why uh, that might be. Yeah, sorry. So I didn't hear your question quite well, but if your question was that what did we went for validating for the uh, validating other TFs? No, we could, but we didn't <laughs> uh, for the timeline that we had. So, uh, but we could have tested for the other like top bound, highly ranked TFs. We could have tested those, but we didn't do the experimental validation for those TFs. We just went for June day because we were kind of. Um, We've, we've, we had some strong literature evidence regarding that, that it's a part of AB1 complex. And it's already, there are papers that uh, relate AB1 complex to colorectal cancer progression. So, um, but Jundi is not specifically, those papers do not specifically talk about Jundi. So, um, we, we wanted to test if, if the knockdown of Jundi has any effect on invasiveness. That's why we went for Jundi. Another question that I have is, uh, how hard is it to do the inference? Is it uh, scalable? Yeah, yeah, it's scalable. So um, the way, if you mean by in inferring the, the the genes that are the mediate, mediate, mediators of the TF's influence on phenotype, so it's just that we, we just need to compute the posterior probability of the gene being the mediator. It's actually quite um, well. The formulation is com complicated, more complicated than that, but um, it's not hard to compute that probability. Okay, there's a question from uh, Julia Zeitlinger, and uh, so she asks, "Have you analyzed motif combinations?" Well, no, we could have, but uh, we decided to go with the real TF binding data because we had that data. An ENCOP project. So uh, we use that. But our method, uh, we could also provide it with motif data. But it's just that uh, we weren't sure, like, how, how we weren't that much confident in using motif, motif data. But you could use, like, combinations of uh, motif features. Uh, is that a model extension that you are thinking of? Uh, is that an actual extension? Well, no, we can't. We can actually use motif data in our uh, analysis, but we just went for the real tier finding data. That's that's all we did. I mean, uh, yes, we are more constrained. The fact that we have to go with the real binding sites because. Uh, definitely, those sites. I mean, I mean, for example, for our analysis, we only had we only found twenty TFs with available cheap data on Encode project for uh, HCV one sixteen cell line. But we could also use motif data to uh, increase the number of TFs, and it's scalable. We can we can do that. Okay. I'm sure people will connect with you at uh, the uh, networking. So let's move on to the next uh, speaker. 